Hey Myth Junkies, it's Mama Mythos, and I'm back to bring you an inside look into the world of vampires. What are they? Where do they come from? We'll cover the obvious and the not so obvious and tie in some real life details to reimagine what we know and don't know about vampires. And of course, showcasing the best examples of vampires that we can find throughout pop culture. We covered a video on Dracula previously, so we won't be mentioning him in this video. If you'd like to check that out, click on the link above or in the description below. If you like this video and you reach the end saying, huh, wow, this video was awesome, I want to see more, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Now let's begin before our blood runs too cold. Vampires are found all over the world, from the Aztecs, some parts of Asia, and even Australia. If you want us to cover each of these in their own separate videos, be sure to tell us in the comments below or vote in the poll linked above. This collection of nightmares starts with the Mayan Kamazots, the Mayan bat god who offers heads as an offering to the gods. The Mananangal of the Philippines. This bloodthirsty lady can hunt you by dividing her upper body from her lower body and fly off in search of her prey. The Australian Yara Mayahu, the weird red frog dude from Aboriginal folklore that eats you up, spits you out, and eats you up again. Sounds like fun times, right? The vampires we know today were once examples of either real-life sicknesses and disease and superstitions that began with the dead and ended with exhumed graves. Anywhere from England to Rhode Island, many stories exist that support vampirism as more than just monsters, but a human condition that could befall anyone. You may or may not know this, but anemia was actually known as the vampire's disease and was under much superstition as well as tuberculosis, which was known as consumption back in the day. The symptoms of these illnesses are pale skin, lack of blood flow, and coughing up blood. These created the stories heard from the bedsides of the sick and the dying of an undead manifestation known as vampires. You oftentimes realize that most monsters in folklore are actually based off of a real-life collection of incidents and used to explain it. The story of Mercy Brown is the best documented account of this very subject. Here is my version of this story. A Rhode Island family undergoes multiple infections of tuberculosis. One died after the other. The youngest, Edwin, was infected, and a desperate doctor had a news reporter come with him to exhume the bodies of Edwin's family that had passed from the same disease. Mercy Brown, his sister, was the least decomposed of all. Clearly, she's a vampire, right? Well, they took her heart and kidney and burned them to ashes, and made a tonic for Edwin to drink. Ugh. It was for nothing because he died anyways two months later. Poor Mercy Brown was buried again along with the superstition surrounding the story. Did you know that there is actual archaeological evidence of buried bodies that had large rocks placed on top of them by suspecting loved ones? Or large stakes nailed to the heart and sometimes legs to prevent the dead from coming back from the grave? These examples come from multiple regions and are the solid evidence of these monsters within the imagination of those who took such preventative measures. I'm going to take a moment to let you guys know, if you're still here with me, keep watching to see my favorite vampire at the end of this video. Oh, and be sure to let me know your favorite in the comment section below. The vampires we know today have many powers and weaknesses depending on the type. The three main types of vampires according to Eastern European folklore and vampire enthusiasts are Dampir, Muroi, and Strigoi. To further explain the differences and avoid any confusion, I will define each of them while also showcasing examples of each type using numerous clips from video games and movies. Dampiers are the muggles of the vampire world. They possess superhuman strength and unlike normal vampires, they're actually impervious to sunlight. But they're also mortal and normally have a vengeance towards their own kind in pretty much every storyline you can find. A few iconic examples of Dompier are Eric Daywalker Brooks from Blade, Celine from Underworld, D from Vampire Hunter D, Alucard from Castlevania, and of course we can't leave out Saya from Blood the Last Vampire. Strigoi have an insatiable thirst for blood. They have maximum strength capabilities, and as far as looks go, they're the freakiest of all three types. 
They possess the typical weaknesses such as sunlight, decapitation, as well as apotropaics, which are items used to avert evil spirits like crosses. Some examples of Strigoi are from The Strain, I can smell the silver on the blade. and The Reaper from Blade 2. Moroi comes from the Slavic word mora, meaning nightmare. Moroi tend to be hairy and weak to sunlight and possess elemental powers. So I couldn't really find much as an example for Moroi, but I know how we can make this work. You take Skyrim, you create a Khajiit, you get infected by the sanguine Vampiris, and you mastered your mage skills, and BAM! You're a Moroi. Well done! And now, last but not least, my favorite vampire. Has to be a good one, right? Well, I'll level with you. Dio Brando is pretty much everything you could ask for, and more, in a vampire. This villain is from Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. After obtaining the stone mask, he turns into a vampire and wreaks havoc among Jojo and his buddies and Jojo's family, generation after generation. Dio is far superior to a lot of typical vampires. His evil nature, lust for power, awesome strength and abilities makes him my favorite vampire. Now who is your favorite vampire? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. So here we are, you've reached the end of the video. Well, do you want more? Do you want to join the Myth Junkie group? Find me on Facebook and like our page. While you're on a roll, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and comment below of what sort of content you'd be interested in seeing here on this channel. I'll see you on the other side, and thank you for letting Mama break down the mythos.